What's up guys, today I'm going through this 18650 power bank, so let's go. Alright, so first off I picked up this unit online, you can pick them up in you know, on eBay, AliExpress, I've got some links in the description below, uh, it'll take you to go have a look at some of those units. Now, when you purchase this case, it doesn't come with the batteries, so you need to get the batteries separate, those are the 18650 cells. Now, compared to a already complete unit, these units you can select the cells you want, which can be quite larger, or it could be that you have recycled the cells from something else and you can then use them in this, which makes them a lot cheaper than purchasing the cells brand new. All right, so as we look at the specs of the case, um, basically, it's a assemble yourself. Um, the batteries aren't included. It says that multiple times. Now, it does say there, pay attention to the positive and negative poles when installing the batteries. If you were to put one battery in uh, one way and then put another battery in another way, you're basically short-circuiting to 18650 cells, which uh, would not be good. Um, so, yeah, don't do that. Make sure you put them in the right way. Now, the inputs... Uh, we have the, uh, I'll show you on the actual device itself, but basically we have the inputs from the USB and there's also a USB-C uh, that charge the actual batteries. And then we have the outputs, which are the two USB-A outputs. We have a one amp and it says they're two amp, but when you actually turn the unit on and plug it in, uh, it's actually a 2.1 amp output, but both are five volts. We have the dimensions and then also once it's actually uh, on and plugged in and everything's connected up, you can double click the button to turn the flashlight on. Um, same thing to turn it back off again. Single click to basically activate once you've got something plugged in. The backlight on the screen will be on for those five seconds, will automatically shut down and um, yeah, the, the unit itself, if there's nothing drawing, will shut down after around that three minutes time. All right, so here's how it comes. Basically, it's in a couple different parts. Uh, you have your front of the case, the component with the back and also the electronics. And as you can see down here, we've got some details about the maximum uh, voltages and currents. And it does say they're 30,000 milliamp hour, but that's dependent on the batteries that you connect up. But we'll discuss that later on. We have eight negative terminals with those springs. And then on the positive side, so you've basically got the electronics there. You've got a little screen cover for the top piece of the case. And that just has the button, which activates the button on the electronics, which is there. And it's, yeah, pretty straightforward. So... What we could do is put that plastic uh, screen covering as well on later. Now, when mine actually rocked up, it looked like it had been bent a little bit. So I don't know if that's normal, but you can just push it and adjust it, which I've done here. But once we've put our batteries in, we basically just put the top of the case on top that clips down onto it and it's uh, all done. So let's go through to the next step. I'm going to actually remove everything out and I've undone the screws on the electronics on that circuitry and then we're going to pop everything out just so you can see it. You don't need to do this yourself. It's only just so I can show um, you guys how, how it actually looks on the inside, which as you can see, we've just got the electronic circuit board with the screen on it. Um, we've got the button on one side. And then you can see here, we've got more electronics on the other side. We've got the LEDs, those two of those there, the USB ports, and there's the import for the USB and the USB-C. So pretty straightforward, um, and it's very common with a lot of other similar power bank setups. All right, now I've put everything back together. Um, next thing we're going to do is take that little bit of the clear Perspex um, plastic, which has an adhesive backing on it. So once we peel that off, we can just pop that into the window slot. Now it's ready to have the batteries installed. So what I'm going to do is just move everything out of the way now so we can get the eight batteries that we need. Now these are 18650 cells. You can't put anything else in there. Um, 
it will cause problems if you do because obviously the circuitry is all set up for 18650 cells. Now that's for charging and all those things because of the voltage levels. Now I'm going to go through and find some cells out of my uh, box here. Now I'm making them all quite similar in capacity because I've had these cells all tested. Being that they're all brand new cells and that they're all quite similar, it doesn't really matter too much that they're going to be out from each other because they're paralleled. But personally, I just like to try and group my cells as close as I can. Um, that's just something I like to do. That way too, I can uh, know exactly the capacity and um, yeah, potentially one cell might be out from all the others. Now I'm testing all of the cells uh, to make sure that they're all similar in voltage because you don't want to have one cell that's completely drained and let's say at three and a half volts and then you've got other cells that are all at four volts because it's then going to try and balance the cells when you're actually plugging it all together. It's just as easy to charge them all properly uh, to begin with. Plug them all in and that way you know you're not going to have any issues and you're also going to make sure that you don't have a bad cell as well because you would have tested that beforehand uh, when you're charging it. Now the way I've set my cells up to actually plug in, I've done them in a bit of a um, an order of lowest capacity to highest because they're so close, it's not really that big of an issue. I didn't really need to, it was just one of those things that I did just to make sure, I don't know, it, was, it just felt like doing it. Um, the only thing that is important is making sure that all the positive sides are set up on one way and the negative side is set up on the other side. So that way, like I said before, we're not short circuiting between the cells. Now, you can tell the difference by the flat side on the bottom of the 18650 is the negative, and then you've got that little ridge on the other side, which is the positive, which, as you can see, as I plug them in, the unit switches on uh, for the first time, and it can run the unit just with one cell in it, so you can turn it on, it'll still run. Um, it just won't have as high of capacity if we had another cell or if we filled it up with all eight cells. I'd recommend filling all eight because if you don't, there's potential there of that extra room. One of the cells might pop out and move if, say, for example, the whole case is shaking around or whatever. You might drop it and it accidentally pops out or something like that. Um, you just want to try and limit the movement. So I'm just popping them all in one by one. And uh, now that all eight are in there, it's uh, ready to basically put the lid back on and go from there. And the lid just basically clips on top. There's no screws or anything like that. So you can just pop it down in place and it's done. So now all I need to do is push the on button. You can see there it lights up the screen, says we're at 100%. Now... If you double push that button, the LED lights, they'll come on as well, which there you can see them. Now, it's not the most brightest light ever, but um, it's something extra if you need it. Uh, double push to turn it back off again. Now I'm plugging USB into that uh, port on the right, which is the one amp output. You can see there it starts to charge my iPhone, saying that it's out. Um, now that's obviously the lower of the two ports for the current output so you've got the one and then we can switch it across to the second one which has 2.1 amps now as for the charging we have the type c and the micro uh, usb connections there for the inputs to charge the cells now all you need to do is just plug it in and have it plugged into a power supply uh, typically, you would use one of those uh, wall packs that you can run from a USB into it. Um, and then, yeah, it will light up to say that there's the input. Now, the reason it doesn't do it on my one to begin with is because the cells are already charged. So, to try and discharge it, I'm actually charging two things at once. I'm charging my phone and I'm also charging another uh, power pack to um, basically just drain this thing as quick as possible and um, it does take a while to do it because the battery capacity is so high 
So you can see there, there's the two outputs showing up, the 2.1 and the one amp. Now it was taking that long to actually discharge it. I took all the other cells out and just left one cell in there. I've still got two things actually charging off it. And then eventually I got it down to even just that 98%. Um, just so I could show you guys how the charging looks. So when you plug the charger on the input in, uh, we will get it lighting up and it'll actually say that in, meaning that it's actually charging as an input into uh, the actual unit. So when it comes to how much things you can charge off it, it all based on how much the cells that you install are worth. Now, if I look at, say for example, uh, some of the popular mobile phones, we have the battery capacities on the side there. You can see what they're like. They are all rated in milliamp hour. Now, I'll do the same as well. You can see here with the iPhones. This is so you can just get an appreciation of how much capacity is in uh, this charger itself. Now, I have purchased other pre-made chargers uh, from Kmart, there was one that was $30 and its capacity was about 15,000 milliamp hour. The cells that I've installed, which are approximately 3,380 milliamp hour, that's about 27,000 milliamp hour. So if you look at the comparison to the actual phones, that's a lot of charging and I'm currently sitting on an iPhone 8, um, which is under 2,000, so I can nearly get 15 full charges out of this pack, which is massive uh, for what I'm using. But like I said, that all comes down to the cells that you purchase, or if you've recovered the cells from somewhere else. Now, in the description below, I've put a link to a cell database, which is from secondlifestorage.com. They have a really big cell database there. You can check out all the specs on lots of different cells. Um, it tells you the capacities and all that stuff as well, which is quite handy if you want to understand maybe some cells that you've uh, recovered from something and find out their capacities, things like that. As for this battery power bank, I'm actually really happy with it. It lasts a long time uh, for me, which is handy if I'm going to be uh, going somewhere, I can take it with me and be able to not only charge my phone, but use it for charging any uh, USB device so quite handy so I hope you liked this video if you did make sure you leave that thumbs up also make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date uh, future projects like this and as always thanks for watching and we'll see you next time